Oh, g'day, I'm Mike Johnson. In this YouTube, I'm going to describe our SIP trunks or SIP pairs uh, and at the end of it, provide an example of an actual config. So as a recap, at SIP City, we support two methods of subscribing to our service, registration or pairing. Uh, this deck covers pairing only. We do cover registration on a separate YouTube, which you can also find on our site. Now, through our portal, the process takes a minute to configure. You're basically selecting a DID, which will become your primary trunk number, or a SIP trunk. Uh, secondly, enabling uh, SIP pairing, which isn't much harder than um, enabling a checkbox. And lastly, setting a target IP address, uh, which we will ultimately route all calls to. Outside of this is a couple of do's and don'ts. You'll need a static IP address, which will act as uh, endpoints for all your inbound calls. Dynamic DNS host names are not allowed. Don't block any of our traffic. So this means no firewall rules or NAT blocking traffic between our servers and your IP PBBX. Now, you may set up firewalls to limit traffic to our servers or set up some sort of port forwarding if required for security reasons. So to simplify things, you may want to speak to us about our Layer 2 pre-configured Cisco 800 router service. You'll need a SIP version 2 compatible PBX, or if your PBX is of the older TDM style ISDN ilk, you'll need a specialist um, ISDN IP gateway such as NADTRAN, which you should also speak to us about. Now, don't use your 028 account ID as your main SIP trunk. Um, SIP trunking numbers, this is really important. And lastly, we don't support H323 or any other VoIP protocols. Uh, to show you what our portal looks like from inside, jump onto our homepage, username and password, and now you're on the portal. Now before we set up the pair, we need to decide which DID to anchor your IP address against, which is going to convert your main trunk number into a SIP trunk. Uh, once enabled, all the other DIDs uh, attached to the account will automatically route through the SIP trunk number. Now we do provide some flexibility to configure exceptions and alternate trunks, but this is the basic concept of our SIP pair. A trunk DID linked to an IP address which all numbers route through uh, creating our IP to IP connection. Now remembering not to use the 028 account ID, I've logged on with um, the DID that I want to set as my main trunk. Head down to the bottom right of the page and select SIP pairing. Now once again, when you're setting up a SIP pair, you're specifying the target IP address that all calls will be routed through to. In this case, we've enabled SIP trunking. Uh, you can see here's my primary host IP. Uh, we've got an option for failover. Um, when the primary IP address is down or unreachable and this is useful when you've got two switches or gateways that can accept calls at different locations or IP addresses. Obviously a useful feature for redundancy on a customer site. The exception rule allows you to pull out and link one of the available DIDs and route it to an alternate IP address. You can enable SIP signaling behind NAT and do not reset my line settings. I'll explain this. By default, you enable SIP pairing. It wipes all DIDs, uh, sorry, all existing settings on uh, against the DID, such as voicemail, music on hold, routing, uh, or forwarding details. Taking this option preserves all the existing settings as well as any forward rules uh, for those DIDs. So that's all there is to SIP pairing. Save the changes, and you're done. Now some common FAQs, um, can I log on um, with a SIP pairing enabled? Uh, this question relates to pairing versus registration. You can't use registration once the account uh, number has been converted into a SIP pair. Pairing takes precedence. When you set up the SIP pair, all lines are automatically routed to the SIP pair. It's a binary state. If you don't want the entire account and all the numbers trunked into a single pair, take a look at our exception rule, which we've mentioned above, uh, which enables you to designate an individual number that won't be included as part of the pair. Uh, the other alternative is to use lines administration uh, to convert an individual number into a SIP pair. But creating a pair on an individual number through the lines admin only creates a pair against that single number. How do I uh, configure my IP PBX? Um, we do have a number of configs for NEC, Cisco, Avaya, Mitel, 
and a bunch of asterisk implementations. You'll need to speak to us about those, but the main setting to configure is the host or proxy address of your outbound trunk, which is trunk.subsidy.com.au. Uh, if you must enter an IP address, do an NS lookup on trunk.subsidy.com.au. Uh, but generally it's 27 111 13.65. And I think that's just about it for SIP pairing. If you've got any questions, send a note to support at subsidy.com.au. And once again, thanks for your time.